Morning, Alan. Morning, Piers. Come on. <laughs> Piers, why have you commissioned all these portraits of yourself in fancy dress? Oh, they're my forebears. Of course, I was forgetting. Being a congenital idiot means it runs in the family, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ta-da! Sir Bollocks van Fletcher Dervish. <laughs> the first baronet. Do you remember the story of how Sir Walter Raleigh put his cloak down on a puddle for the Queen to walk on? Don't tell me Sir Bollocksman was responsible for the puddle. Well, I mean, it was the first time that he met the Queen, so he got rather overexcited. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this mouth breather is? Oh, great, 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 great Grandpa Peregrine. Oh, no, I've heard of him. Tell me, was he the syphilitic child molester or the one who got hanged for interfering with farm animals? He didn't interfere with them. He was just a pioneer of artificial insemination. <laughs> Can't get much more artificial than nobbing a goat. <laughs> Might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. Well, he wasn't hung, so there. His sentence was transportation to Australia. Australia? Where there were 75 farmyard animals for every human being. <laughs> Talk about landing on your sheep. <laughs> Commissioner, the Honourable Sir Piers Fletcher Dervish, can I help you? Oh, it's for you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Oh, God, how many times have I told you not to phone me at work? No, I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was fun while it lasted, but it is over. Oh, for God's sake, don't start crying, Squidgy. <laughs> All right, all right. I'll return the photographs if becoming the Queen is so important to you. <laughs> so, how was London, Piers? Still full of dreary failures in cardboard boxes trying to embarrass proper people into parting with their loose change? Well, I wouldn't know. I was whisked off in a chauffeur-driven limousine direct to Downing Street for a very controversial meeting with Sir Gravel. Really? Downing Street? Was uh, John Major there? No, he'd gone off to see the Phantom of the Opera. Really? I didn't know he was still talking to Lamont. <laughs> so, what was this controversial meeting all about? Legalising marijuana. Oh. There's going to be a vote in the Commission about you, and Sir Greville wants me to do the right thing for England. Which is? Oh, Christ, I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Piers, this is Europe after all. You've got a cabinet full of highly educated Eurocrats working for you. Let them work it out. Well, I can't. They all resigned on Friday after I sent my chef de cabinet on a catering course. Piers, <laughs> chef de cabinet is French for head of your private office. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish people would tell me these seats. <laughs> I mean, that's half the trouble. They're all bloody foreigners. We've beaten them all and they can't stand it. Agincourt, Waterloo, Euston, Marylebone, Finsbury Park. I mean, why couldn't they give me a cabinet from countries that like Great Britain? Because, Piers, the population of Luxembourg isn't that big. Alan. Yes? Will you help me do my drug speech? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> As much as I'd like to spend the morning chatting to someone who failed their GCE in finger painting, <laughs> I have got a lunchtime session with a high-class courtesan, personally recommended by Michael Douglas. That sounds dangerous. Why? Uh, and you think you know everything. <laughs> Courtesan's one of those band drunks the Olympic athletes use. <laughs> Spheroids. The ones that make their wobbly bits grow when they wear their skin tight trousers. Well, you're half right, Piers. Who am I? Which half? The half about the wobbly bits growing. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost to wear black before dinner. <laughs> we. Oui. Hello, je suis ici pour faire service à Monsieur Bastard. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, do you have anything that you could show me by way of identification? <laughs> Come on up. Uh, good. Good. Sick. Perfect. <laughs> no, it's lacking something. It's lacking something. Uh, of course. <laughs> 
I see it's not got any bigger. Sorry, but you can't be Veronique, Europe's hottest whore. I mean, you always said you wouldn't bother with sex at all if Harvey Nichols was open 24 hours a day. I make sex with you, darling. So, now I find that my own wife is selling her body on the streets of Europe. I mean, I mean, I mean, does it pay well? I hardly think that's any of your business, considering last time we met, you murdered my lover, stole all my money, and left me catatonic in a lunatic asylum. Well, I never said I was perfect, darling. <laughs> But yeah, it pays very well. With the added bonus that I can tell all the influential and important people I screw, the big knobs of Europe, so to speak, that I was forced on the game by a husband who was unwilling to keep me and unable to satisfy me. You'll be the laughing stock of Brussels. <laughs> you know, there's something deeply unattractive about a woman who bears a grudge. <laughs> this isn't a grudge, darling. This is psychopathic revenge lust. Compared to me, Glenn Close in Fatal Attraction looks like the Avon lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, what should we say, then? Half a million pounds to get you off my back? I was thinking more in the region of three quarters of a million. And the opportunity of seeing you ritually disemboweled by a coven of blood-crazed devil worshippers. <laughs> yeah, can't quite run to that, darling. How about 600,000 plus a highly paid, influential job right at the throbbing heart of Europe? Oh, but I already have a highly paid, influential job at the heart of Europe's throbbing groin. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Mustache. I've got a five o'clock jump lead special with Sir Greville. <laughs> This is a position that will allow you to keep your clothes on. I mean, what is the point of having a wardrobe full of Chanel originals if you have to spend all your time dressed in a pair of gold lame handcuffs and a Chelsea football string? <laughs> Sorry I'm late for start, but I was tied up. Really? Have you paid extra? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You're very hard, ain't you? Your wife is such an inventive young woman, don't you find? She certainly is. The unmistakable aroma of singed pubic hair is anything to go by. <laughs> Why do you want cannabis legalised? I'm sure you could guess. You're working for one of the big cigarette manufacturers? There's several of them, actually. Oh, I see a sort of uh, joint venture, isn't it? <laughs> There's a big market in legalised hashish out there, and the main tobacco companies can't wait to jump on the bandwagon. Yes, I can imagine the advertising now. You're never alone with the spliff. The smoking compartments on the H25 from Tunbridge Wells will never be the same again. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we wander? Yes. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to ensure that Fletcher Dervish's anti-drug speech is so ludicrous that all the undecided commissioners will vote for legislation. I see. All right. But I have to warn you, it won't come cheap. You should have that translated into Latin and emblazoned across your coat of arms. What had you in mind? Oh, nothing much. Say, five million pounds a year for life, index linked to the inflation rate of, say, Brazil. We can say it. I don't know what you're to pay. Now, come on, it, Grevy. Five million a year is hardly one percent of the gross profit they'll make from legal debt. Touche. As ever, we understand each other perfectly. You know, even reduced to this size, it's still impressive, isn't it? It doesn't it remind you of how you felt as a starry-eyed newcomer, eager to make your mark? Yes. You know, I suppose there's only ever one thing I really wanted to do, and I never achieved the necessary height. Not until now, that is. God! Let you never took me for a wet, did you go? Hello? Yes, I'll have to get back to you on that. Hello? Yes, I'll have to get back to you on that. Oh, shut up, you stupid woman. Oh, no, no, no. I wasn't talking to you, Mr. Delors. For the last time, I do not know who Squidgy is. Hello? 
Yes, I'll have to get back to you on that. Darling, why won't you talk to me? I love you, Squidgy. <laughs> For the last time, I do not know who you are. <clears throat> Kensington Palace? <laughs> I knew it was ever work, but I never realized it was suicidal. <laughs> Don't you think we should do something? Well, <laughs> tricky moral point, you know, interfering with someone who's made the rational decision to end such a meaningless existence. <laughs> the oxygen supply to his brain's been cut off. Yeah. <laughs> and I must admit, in most cases, that would be a problem. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, you saved my life. Oh, it's awful. All the phones are ringing at once. People screaming at me in foreign languages. Oh, well, we come down to the nub of the problem. It's just a simple misunderstanding. I mean, obviously, Piers, you thought you heard someone telling you to go fax yourself. <laughs> go on. I can't go for my own. Of course you can't, Piers. And that's why I have found you a new chef de cabinet. Oh, really? That's wonderful. But who? Oh, you're looking at her. Oh, don't be silly, Alan. You're a man. <laughs> He means me, Piers. After all, I speak four languages and I'm well connected in Brussels. Several times a day. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Tremendous news. <laughs> I'm so pleased that you two aren't bad friends anymore. Yes. Isn't it extraordinary just how much true love you can buy for 600 grand? Oh. <laughs> so, Piers. Our first job is to find out where those commissioners stand on the cannabis issue and persuade them to vote the right way. Yes, but how are you going to do that? Well, by sleeping with them all, of course. <laughs> what? There are 16 other commissioners and only a few days left until the meeting. No one said one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bastard, hello. 
Thank you for coming. I know what a busy life you MEPs lead. Oh, that's quite all right. I had nothing on except a small black hood. <laughs> Very good. You've got the balls. <laughs> Whether you keep them depends upon our reaching an understanding. Consider it already reached. <laughs> Consider it surpassed. <clears throat> Excellent. You see, my organization is very concerned at the proposed legalization of cannabis. I see, so you're the moral majority. No, we are the amoral minority. You see, if cannabis is legalized, a lot of people will lose their livelihoods. Growers, smugglers, dealers, hitmen. Legalization will undermine the price and lead to financial ruin for all these small business people. You wouldn't want to see that, would you? Well, of course not. I mean, what a tragedy. The poor little drug dealers. Uh, I'm glad we understand one another. Because if the commission were to legalize cannabis, we should hold you responsible and take out a contract. Only your life. Contract? Uh, Oh, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Get involved in all those messy legal expenses. <laughs> Excellent. Then, we didn't need to detain you no further. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Bastard. <laughs> Good what? <laughs> I just got a mysterious phone call telling me to go and pick you up by the ball. Uh, lovely. Another day, another lobster. <laughs> right, Sarah, you're going to have to pay for all of this. Yeah, those sods swipe my wallet. Darling, I dashed out without any money. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right, don't worry. Just back me up. Here comes one now. Mm -hmm. Please, your uh, lordship has no need to get legal. Yes, sir. L'addition, s'il vous plaît. Nine fifty, ten thousand dollars for twenty grand's worth of bridge work. <laughs> he got off lightly, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, still, it's not much compensation for the five million a year I was going to get from legal dope. Oh, well. Off you go. Where? Well, you've got to go and sleep with all the commissioners again to get them to rechange their minds. <laughs> Why? Darling, if the commission votes to legalise cannabis, I'm a dead man. Yeah, I don't find that a very persuasive argument, I <laughs> Is this a little more persuasive? Much. <laughs> all right. But I'm not going to enjoy it. Oh, darling, come along. Just lie back and think of Britain. Ooh. <clears throat> he always puts me off. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour, tout le monde. Shut up, Piers. Go and stand in the corner. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you all and open the meeting on behalf of Commissioner Sir Piers Fletcher Dervish. He doesn't want to do too much talking today, as he has hurt his throat. Oh, no, I haven't, Alan. <laughs> there you see. Now, as I'm sure many of you are aware, some commissioners expect to reach a decision this morning on the hashish proposal. However... Commissioner Sir Pierce feels very strongly that the EC should move no further towards liberalising its drug regulations without extensive further investigation. Isn't that right, Sir Pierce? <laughs> yeah, very succinct, Donald. <laughs> and therefore, Sir Pierce is proposing that all commissioners should go on a six-month fact-finding mission to all the major cannabis-producing areas of the world. We are talking about the West Indies. Mexico, Morocco, India, and of course, the Marquis of Blanford's greenhouse. <laughs> Naturally, all travel, accommodation, and sexual services will be first uh, class. Uh, uh, cannabis has been almost completely decriminalized in Holland without any serious social problems arising. Really? And what about the devastating effect that cannabis has on the short term memory? 
to be discussing with him. <laughs> yes, I didn't know you had relatives in Holland. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry, but we cannot continue to ban such a harmless substance without a very good reason. Really? <clears throat> ah, well, now I believe you all know Sarah Gidley Park. Sir Piers' new chef de cabinet. Oh, yes. I think I can safely say I know most of you quite well. F2 Clompies, Monsieur Pipi, and the Furka. Mm, very much. Well, now, as it's nearly lunchtime, shall we go straight to the vote? No, I, I propose that we maintain the ban on cannabis for the next hundred years. <laughs> well, that appears to be fairly una completely unanimous. Good. Congratulations, Commissioner. You pulled it off. Good morning, everyone. Mr. Bastard. Yes, well, never mind about that. Would you mind explaining to me why Cannon and Ball here have to put a hood on my head even though I know where it is I'm going? <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. I shall have to bring that up at the next annual general meeting. <laughs> so, I see from my newspaper, marijuana remains illegal. You've done well. Done well? I've saved you a multi-billion dollar racket. I know. And we're very appreciative. Here. Ah, well. Ah. More like it. Book token? <laughs> what with a book token? Hey, it's not a just a book token. Look, he's a from W.H. Smith. <laughs> you can use it for stationery, cassettes. You can put it towards a compact disc. Are you taking a piss? Yes. <laughs> Look, I'm already several million dollars out of pocket in bribes alone. Surely I get those back. Uh, that's not up to me. I would have to consult with the big boss. So consult, consult. <laughs> he wants a million dollars. Tell him to go screw himself. Anything you say, boss. You. I think we can call it quits now, darling. We'll be quits once I've killed you. <laughs> I don't think that's a very good idea, darling. My friends come from Sicily. They invented the word vendetta. Sarah! Sarah! Help! Help! Sarah! Thank you.